Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of the Jazz Transcription Clinic live on streaming. So yesterday we set up the platform Sound Slice to prepare the transcription of the wonderful Chris Potter solo on All the Things You Are. And today we are going to continue uh, transcribing the solo. So yesterday, if you uh, watch the episode, if not, I will put the link in the description. Um, yesterday we set up this platform here, which is Soundslice, and finally we got the waveform where you can see all the music in uh, uh, shaped as a waveform, and you can see all the notes that you type down uh, in the right place where they are. Uh, so we can keep continuing with the transcription. Yesterday we transcribed the first four bars and here is a recap. And we can continue from here where we left. Uh, today I have the saxophone, so uh, as I said yesterday, you know, the uh use whatever you think is good to be used so if you are a saxophone player trumpet player and you want to play on your instrument or if you are happy to do it without it generally i'm happy to do without it especially if it's a tenor saxophone because it's the instrument that i transcribe the most so the notes comes pretty clear to me and that's the beauty of the ears, right? If you train them uh, constantly to recognize some pitch, you get closer to what I call a relative perfect pitch. So I don't have perfect pitch, but on tenor saxophone, because I have transcribed so much, I can say that I have almost perfect pitch. So if you play a note on tenor saxophone, uh, most likely I'm going to get it without the instrument uh, but do whatever you feel comfortable with don't be ashamed or shy uh, sing use your voice use a little keyboard use whatever it's handy to you to get the notes get the right intervals right all right so <clears throat> this is what I transcribed yesterday <laughs> Alright, and we can go from here now. Let me put this down, it's a little bit more convenient for me. Uh, so, as I said, the note will be A, isn't it? This is the last note. D. Ba, di, da. That's a descending semitone. Does it remind you of anything? Descending minor second, it's basically the beginning of Stella by Starlight, isn't it? And I believe the tempo will be a minimum rest and then uh, we have A, which is a quaver, followed by a rest. Da, 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 da. So that would be a rest, rest, and another A, isn't it? He plays a sort of polyrhythm here. And again, this is crotch rest another a uh, rest rest and then i believe there is the note e but e natural so on sun slice you uh, digit uh, command h to get the natural on pc would be control h and you toggle the natural otherwise you can go into the basic notes and toggle the natural on and off here and as you can see if you hover your mouse 
onto a function, it says what is the keyboard shortcut to toggle that. So let me listen again from here. There is another A. So D, this is another A actually. Rest, one, two, three, and E natural. This is E natural, right? And as I said, I can hear on the tenor saxophone those notes are E, D, A, D, E. Uh, just because I recognize the intervals, but even more, I recognize those notes on the tenor saxophone. If you play the same line on guitars, then I start relying uh, a lot more on the intervals. Uh, but do whatever you think is convenient for you, and you can check the notes on your instrument. Right, and that would be you know, the way to check, and then you have to figure out the rhythm. So all the usual business of transcribing. Uh, there is another quaver rest, and then E, E natural again. D, A, D, E. back to I, which is probably okay so here we have can you see here at the top all the bars and we have this bar here so this is a little bit stretched, that looks better. You see I can move the notes and make them more. Crotchets, crotchets, E natural, and four quavers, right? Ta 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 ta, ta ba and the notes will be the same. And remember, guys, I said yesterday that you need to go an octave higher. Ta ta. Let's listen from here. And this is a quaver rest. And there is a... And remember what I said yesterday, if you need to tie a note, just press the letter L and it will be magically tied. So we can even go up. Okay, it's not. Let's see, now this should be here, and we need to move this one here, probably. Yeah. We need to move this here. Oh, now it looks better, isn't it? Yeah, there is a little bit of cleaning process. One 
one, two. Ba 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 da ba do ba ba. So there is a minim rest, and then crotchet. Ba ti da clavis B flat C, and we keep going with clavis D da F D da do do da D da da when I fall in love. Right, D, da, da, B flat, A, F. Not sure about the rhythm. It looks to me that probably There's something weird here in the rhythm going on. We need to clarify that. So Right? Da, de, de, de. Okay, let, let's keep writing then. Yes, if I listen from here, it sounds like a one. Da, da, de, 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 do, and the F is the one. But I'm not sure about that. swing a little bit the rhythm we keep transcribing and then see how we go so this is a quiver rest a rest a tied Da 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 do 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 and crotchet rest. All right. Remember to save. Always save. Right. One, two, ba-da-ba-dee-bo. And we are at the end of the second A section. So this is by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, if you want, guys, you can highlight the form by placing uh, double bar lines. So this is the second A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we put a double bar line. To do so, you go to the uh, bar tool and you select the double bar line. Hmm? I think there is something.
Is any like this? And then this is the one. Is any like this? She is so obscure here. on this look this look looks here ba, ba, da, da, da. does it look right to you It's better. This is so late. It's this one, isn't it? like this I can't be oh here we are missing a rest I just notice now one two three four Project rest, quaver rest, pado body bo and then again T da 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 minus second, descending minus second, again G to make the sharp is command J da do da T B natural boom sorry bado badi bo l ti da do da da do da f sharp e natural g sharp 
Is it an, this note an E natural or a D sharp? Hmm. This is the sort of doubts when I prefer to uh, decrease the speed. Da do di. Da do. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of hearing Do Yes, I go for uh D sharp. Uh thanks uh, whoever you are, I can't see your name. I think I know you, but thanks for subscribing. And I go for D sharp. So please guys don't write um, E flat, even though it sounds the same, but here the chord will be A major because it's the end of the second section. So uh, we need to write D sharp, otherwise there is a brain clash and my brain doesn't process that information of F sharp and E flat with an A major context. And this is the situation where I probably would put a parenthesis uh, or a bracket around the D because the D is really like a ghost note. Right? And after the G sharp, we have a crotchet rest. All right. So I guess this is a minimum rest. Body body, a quaver rest. C, an octave lower. Do. G sharp. So again, I hear the notes, but you can use the intervals to recognize all the pitches. So descending. Uh, perfect fourth and then descending um, major second di do and then descending perfect fourth di do 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 which is basically the same notes that he has played upwards C sharp and then G sharp and then F sharp C sharp right and Let's do it. Da 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 da. Did you hear that ghost note? This is a D natural, da da E natural, and I think here there is a ghost note. And probably this is an E sharp, uh, but it's so ghost that what I'm going to do is to put in brackets. Now this is a bit odd because uh, with sound slice you can't put a sharp on on a cross note, um, so maybe I'm gonna convert it to. Um, bracket uh, and a bracket note okay let me delete it and I do it again E sharp and I put it in brackets there you go and then there is F sharp right um, so once I'm done with a whole transcription, I export the XML file 
and I open it into Sibelius, which is Sibelius has a lot more functions, is specifically designed to write music. And so I can change this to a cross and leave the brackets uh, around that node, which is, I think, a better a way to write that down. Da, 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 da. Again, now if you ask me, I can hear the notes, but as I said, you can check. We are still in the world of um, quavers. So uh, G sharp. D B natural. F sharp, F sharp. And this is a syncopation, I don't think. Is there? Is there a ghost note? Here, da da do da 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 This is really ghost, right? And it's quaver rest and A tied to a crotchet. A crotchet. I would be tempted to tie it to a minim, but I don't like writing that way. So if I want to tie it to a minim, I prefer to write this way. Why? Because I always need to see the middle of the bar. If I put a minim here, look what happens. I and I delete this. I don't see the middle of the bar anymore as it's inside this minim, right? And for the sake of reading this solo and music in general, never hide the middle of the bar. That's a precious tip that I'm giving out uh, right now. So I'm going back to uh, tie to two crotchets and that's more accurate and we can see the middle of the bar. Actually, it's not that long. So we can create a rest here and this can be a minimum rest.
So we are going towards the second part of the bridge. So we are heading towards F sharp major in remember tenor saxophone key. So let's do it. So I can hear A sharp B F sharp A sharp, right? Something like that. Da -da -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. And I will explain later after I put down the notes what's going on here. A sharp. Again, why I don't write B flat? Since we have it already in the key signature. I don't write it because we are heading towards F sharp major. So here the chord for the tenor is G sharp half diminished. Right? And you don't want to write B flat over G sharp half diminished. Again, my brain pops if I do that so I want to D to D F sharp A sharp B and this is a D sharp and again we have quaver and then C sharp tied to a crotchet, possibly a minimum rest like before. Let me see. Yeah, I'm happy with that. You guys need to remember me to save, otherwise, I'm going to lose everything. Uh, and can you hear this thing that he plays to transition into a very far away key? So we are here in A major and we are going towards F sharp major, right? That's three accidentals more to go to F sharp major, meaning that we are uh, transporting the harmony. We are modulating uh, pretty far away from A major. And Chris Potter is so smart that he uses the same rhythm and the same melodic shape to smooth uh, that transition up. Right. We should probably even put a rest here to make it even more similar. Now, I'm happy with what I had before because I can hear, as a saxophone player, I can hear that there is that ghost note there. Woo. Let me go up a little bit because the sound is a little bit corrupted. So let's get this whole line. And it keeps going, right? Once you get a good one, why abandon it? Keep going. So the first two notes are the same, and the rhythm is the same, so we can refer. But this time, I think it goes to G sharp, isn't it? So again, F sharp major, don't write F natural, write E sharp. Am I a maniac of 
and harmony? No, I just want to make things clear. So when I read this, I immediately know that the key here that Chris Potter is thinking is F sharp major. He won't think anything else, right? Okay, let's see whether we have done a good job. So we are at the end of the bridge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this will be the end of the bridge. I put a double bar and I save it. This time I remembered. And let's go. Let's go. We go back to G minor, the chord here is G minor. Ba, ba, ba. One note there was would be. It's very high, but I can hear D G A. Da da da. Right? Am I right? get the rhythm and the last A section down. So it's a whole syncopated line, the rest and G, A. I think he's doing this and then B flat, he's hitting B flat here. Right? Now, this is going to be really high, but again, I will edit maybe at a later time and you can put, I don't know, maybe the whole phrase down an octave. Again, to do so, you can select this note to select on sound slice is as any other software you click and drag and then i think it's here yeah octave but you have to specify that it's octave down or you just transpose it an octave and then you go an octave oh there is octave bass octave so you can yeah i can go octave here so i know that that will be what Chris Potter plays. But he keeps doing quavers, so I was wrong. Da, B flat. And this would be a quaver too tied. Right? No, we need to terminate this. Uh, how do I cancel? Oh no. Let me go out. Known. Okay, I have to. Whoop. What's going on? Known. Known. Oh, come on. This is a bit ridiculous. Okay, you know what? I, again, I will do those edits in Sibelius because, oh, that there was a hook, isn't it? 
maybe I can just grab the hook. No. All right. So I'll do it in Sibelius, and I I keep keep everything there at the top. Uh, now, for the sake of clarity, do 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 do. do. something like that uh, now this is, isn't really happening right CF and I think it's a crotchet F Yep, yeah. and I uh, minim rest. So to me that's E flat, D, D flat, E flat, da, 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 C. So we are entering in the bebop area here. G sharp, G sharp, do A, C, B natural, B flat. So a lot of chromaticism. we have here we have E flat minor or E flat diminished major 7 so he's I think playing over a diminished scale um, so the notes will be E F sharp uh, where is the sharp and G A B flat I mean, listen There's a false, a false A here. What 
what is that? Isn't it C minor descending arpeggio? Da da do, G E flat C G. Oh, uh, why I don't see your name? You are typing. You heard it too. The false A. Yes. Let's listen to it again. And whoever you are, the false A, you play like this. Uh, so you play like this. Another one, uh, Ugo's Gambit. I think I know you as well. You heard it as well? Yeah. Do you hear that? Right. That's a beautiful line, by the way. So gorgeous. Let me try to play it. Uh, from note it's a D so he goes down on the C minor arpeggio right and then lands on a D but is it a normal D you hear is really nasal it's really nasal it's like a saxophone with a cough or a cold, right? So how do you produce that? Uh, by playing D with a side D key. Now this is a very common uh, tenor saxophone trick. Instead of... You hear the difference in the sound? And those are the little details that we need to get when we transcribe. You know, the whole point is to learn the language. And that thing, playing C, uh, playing, playing C with the, um, uh, sorry, playing D with the side key, is a very common thing on the tenor, and we need to learn it. Right, let me check whether Whoa, that's a minim. It's longer. Minim. This goes. And then toda. Toda. Guys in the chat, you want to try to guess what those notes are? Toda. This is a D. To. What note is this one? D, do. I'll give you 10 seconds. D, do. You don't know? All right, it's a C. C and then D, do, do. Right? No, that's wrong. It's a C. Right, so this beautiful line here is really, really gorgeous. Hmm? I, I want to play it again. And I can, to highlight the fact that this is not a normal D, I can put a cross on top of the note 
and I will remember to play that note with a side B. Right? So to put the cross again, you go into the note basics and notation and you select, you toggle the cross up. Uh, all right, I get it, I get it. Okay, I will throw in another quiz soon so you can try again. So this bar is empty after that. And then here there is another very jazzy, cool line. Right? Two. So there is a quaver rest, F, do. And what rhythm is that? Ba da ba da ba, ba da ba da ba, ba da ba da ba, da da di da. And one two three one, and one two three, and one two three three, and one two three three, and two and one three, right? And two and three. So do you know what rhythm is that? Ta 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 ta, ta 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 ta. Da, 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 de, da. It's a wonderful triplet. So all those sounds, once you start transcribing and you keep doing and doing and doing, they will become patterns in your ear and you recognize the patterns so to recognize the notes then is pretty easy so that is do 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 di do 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 di it's a major seven arpeggio in third inversion so we start on the seventh <laughs> Isn't that right? This is cool. And I think it's special. This is A. F sharp A. F, F sharp A. flat and C sharp so like an enclosure to to D no. that's F natural uh, cheeky cheeky potter and C natural That's a crotchet, a dotted crotchet. D, D, B flat, O, D, D. Sorry, my bad. Right? 
Oh, this is another crotchet. T do quaver fa beautiful gorgeous fat tone. Right. Now, uh this is the end of the chorus actually so I'm gonna put a double bar line and we can probably stop here and I will play the whole chorus soon so here the chord guys is B flat major 7 and he is playing you know a simple line but beautiful <laughs> Right, let me turn down the other microphone. And here the chord is it will be D7 altered and it plays sharp nine here and sharp eleven, right? So it's beautiful to resolve on G minor. Right, let's go with this. So let's go from a little bit faster, like ninety percent from top. I don't know how I will do this because I, I will need to practice, but I'll try my best. <laughs> This is when you know the usage of sound slides come really handy if you want to practice i don't know this this line which is really gorgeous i showed yesterday you can loop anytime you want like from here to here you can do it slower and then ah oh, look at this um when you go out from the, uh, one thing that I haven't explained, sorry, about that, is that if you go to, if you click on view here at the top, you change from editing into practicing. Now the window is going to mess up a little bit, uh, as you can see, so I can make it a little bit larger this time, just to fit in the size. And now, if I go into the settings, I can transpose to any key I want. You see? And B major. And, you know, it's done in no time. So if you want to play with alto, you can play this. It's going to be pretty high. But if you play, I don't know, guitar and you play in concert, there you go. You have the same line written in concert so it's super handy right so now i go back to where i was and i will practice a little bit there <laughs> Thank you. 
can keep going, you know, with practicing. So that would be uh, the first chorus with a melody. Shall we play the whole thing again? Oh no, we already did it. All right, so I'll finish this uh, second live streaming with a, uh, yeah, Ugo's Gambit. It sounds all different when you put it together and you know, you can practice and you can slow down the tempo and you can focus on a specific line if it really bothers you. You know, if, I don't know, for example, if this line bothers you, you can just, you know, highlight the line, loop and play and practice. <laughs> notice another thing so let's slow down to like 60 percent and videos are great because we can see the actual artist in motion so look at his hands when he plays this note D, and i can like click on those two notes if you watch the video you can see his left hand going in from c to d look from F, C, and D. You see that his hand is going in. That tells me that he's playing that note as a regular D, but he adds the side key. And to do that, you have to move your left hand, right, a little bit in. And he's doing that to get a more honky sound on the D, hmm? which I can show you. all those little things that you can notice first by ear so you you're going to listen the sound on that D again it's pretty nasal so uh, and you have to learn it so I'm going to put another uh, cross on top of that I will do it and beautiful line to resolve and to transition into a new chorus. Um, just, uh, I, I will need to study this one, but just, you know, a few things. He's starting very melodically, very diatonic. So he doesn't use much uh, chromaticism in the first chorus. Here, the chord is A major and he's using the sharp 11 to give a little bit of spice. There is a great logic and great usage of melodic pedals. Like, do you see here how many times he hits the note A? And if you notice, what is the piano doing? piano was repeating that note before din 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 here right and this is how jazz works guys you swap ideas you get inspiration from uh, the people that is playing with you and you interact with them it's a it's a real dialogue <laughs> So that's like magic, right? As soon as uh, Chris Potter hears this, he starts playing, repeating the note A, and the pianist, Shai Maestro, 
he is catching that and I said, okay, you got it. Let, let's do that together, right? And as I said, once you get a good idea, why abandon it? Let's do it. But here the harmonies change. So again, Chris Potter is playing this line, nice, simple. And then for the resolution into A major, he keeps the same shape. So that's a stream of consciousness of a jazz player. You know, you always do something as a consequence of either something that you heard going on around you or something that you just played. And in this case, it's both. Same idea. And this is a beautiful line because we are heading towards the end of the chorus that happens here. And he wants to play a beautiful bop line. So this thing here, these four notes, do, 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 it's called enclosure. When you, uh, Ugo's Gambit, they are improvising everything. They are improvising 100%. It's not sometimes, it's all improvised. And the tune is called All the Things You Are. It's a very popular tune in jazz. But um, they played the melody before. Uh, actually the piano uh, played the melody and then from here they all improvise on the form of the song so it's like playing variations of the melody variations of the song <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> you can't believe it but yeah that's true it's cool isn't it and uh, so it, it's all improvised and all happens in the moment so how much control you need on the music that you play and on your instrument to like keep control of everything, the harmony, the notes, the tuning, the technique, your instrument, the sound, and listen to what's going on in the band and react in real time and produce such cool lines. You know, those guys are monsters. So that's why we study them. Right? And I was saying this thing here. Boo, ba, 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 ba. It's called encro enclosure. So you have a target note, which is B flat. And you play four notes before. You play one tone below, a semitone below. And then one tone up, a semitone up. And this is the kind of ideas that we need to study, for example, over the cycle of fifths to improve our playing to incorporate some bebop ideas into it so i can take that line for example and have a wander around the cycle like this and then i go to the next note in the cycle which is e flat a flat So, forth. so those are the things that are really handy for us to practice and to, you know, develop our ideas. This line is simply gorgeous. I love it. I love the shape of it and how you play.
another thing, and then I will finish. You see, just in one chorus, that he's going through the whole registers of the saxophone, you know, everywhere. He starts mid low, goes up, and then goes, comes down a little bit, stays up, stays up, build up some tension, some more tension, then goes to the altissimo notes, and then he go, comes back, comes, comes back, and reach low G, and then it's down again, up, and all the way down to low C. So it's like having a rubber band, and you stretch it, and you release the tension afterwards. So you create dynamic playing in your playing. All right, that was the first chorus, and probably tomorrow I'm going to do the second chorus and to do the transcription and thanks to everyone for watching it has been a real fun and keep in touch there will be more to come thanks to everyone who was watching and to those ones who interact it really means a lot to me thank you